That's a brief pause for the national anthems. Sure, we ace as well for Egypt. It's a big night for those young Egyptian players who progress into the final four to retain their title in the under 23 AFCON. Gabon won't be necessarily looking to stop them doing so, but as mentioned, looking to go out on a high. Bele Nambi has chosen to go with a 4 3 3 formation for this evening. Swabakali is restored, having served his suspension for that aforementioned red card. In front of him, a back four of Oyono, Awawari and Mbula, with Obani on the left back role. Mbongi, Vanil and Dutume, new introduction, and Samake and Zay in the midfield three. Up front, Matuti, Babanzilla and Jirabe. Of course, Flores Jirabe, almost saw Gabon disqualify before they got to the tournament. More on that later. Appreciating team for this evening. Omar Artan, free from Somalia. His assistants, Jonathan Ahonto Kofi, Joel Wonka Doe, and the fourth official, Clement Franklin Kapan. Two captains meeting up for the pre match admin. Bakali. And Adele and uh, Samake and Zay trying to get involved as well. The best view of the coin toss. Be up. 
is in operation, if required. And hope for nothing too contentious to deal with. But will forever be a watchful eye over this evening's football. As for Egypt, Nigeria Mikali has also gone for a 4-3-3. Hamza Allah keeps his spot between the sticks. He has had a great tournament so far, yet to concede a goal. Helped, of course, by his back line. Today, he's just the one change. Hamid El Magrabi coming in for the suspended Ahmed Eid. Picked up his second yellow of the tournament on match day two. Ahmed Koka again in the midfield. Turns 22 next week. Ibrahim Adel, the captain, was the scorer of Egypt's only goal so far in the tournament, which was the winner as well on match day two. Faisal alongside him with the assist for that one. They're joined up front by Ahmed Atef. So the referee blows the whistle and away we go in Tangier. Egypt get us underway. Match day three in this year's Total Energies Cup Under-23 Africa Cup of Nations. 2011 champions Gabon take on the reigning champions Egypt in Group B's final game. Egypt in their traditional red and white shooting from left to right as we watch on in this first half. Gabon in yellow and blue, very Brazil-esque kit. And they play like Brazil immediately on the back foot here. Egypt with an early attack. Straight into the area. Adele trying to slip it through. Not quite able to thread the needle on that occasion. Early bit of work for the Gabon back line. But dealt with, reassuringly so. Always important for the players to get a few reassuring touches early on. Steady those nerves. Yes, there is more at stake this evening for Egypt and Gabon. Experienced side though. Not quite kept in there by Mahmoud Rawidi. There is Ibele Gnambi. Equally experienced coach. Side here on the front foot now was Matusi trying to find his way into the area. That's not convincingly cleared. That's a bit better. Out for a throw now. Slightly nervy first showing from the Egypt defenders. On now with a free kick as well. Free not happy with that challenge from Osama Faisal. Did get the ball, but certainly came around the back of the player in the process. away here. Jeremy Abune there. The fancy flick. And that's on towards Clay Madel. Cries from the crowd. Claiming that Francois Bacalli oh, committed a foul there. Could do without any 
drama in this game. Nightmare start to the tournament for Bekale. Certainly on side there, Adele. I think Bekale did get to the ball. Certainly took a chunk of the player. And we got a hand to the ball. That will be good enough. I'm sure VAR will have had a quick check. To look there. Use a pace in the attack. Not a bad attempt to return the ball there from Matuzzi. Good first few minutes here from Gabon. And a high tempo to the game in general. Egypt just sitting back and playing it safe. might try and keep the tempo of this game a bit slower to their liking. We saw how dangerous they could be on the attack on match day two. And to do so again there, Adele not quite finding Rawedi. Now the captain giving away a free kick. And it was Adele. Capitalised on that breakaway on match day two, to score the winner. Found by Faisal. And then putting the ball into the top corner. Follow along with the hashtag, Total NG's AFCON U23. Let's know what you've thought about the first five minutes of this game. Bodes well for an entertaining evening of football. towards Arune, he drifts inside, tries to unleash the shot, it's found its way. The teammate, but Egypt now on the counter, down the other end, Faisal through on goal, but he puts it over. The referee may have blown there, offside, flag did eventually go up, and yes, you can see that, only player in the Gabon half. Ryan's been letting the attack play out and then raising his flag, as is often the right thing to do and the instruction given to the linesman these days. With VAR in use, to let the attack play out to see what would have happened in case the decision was incorrect. So on that one, it certainly wasn't. Jerry Mikali, Brazilian coach, in charge of Egypt. They have liked a calmer start to proceedings, but a couple of big chances already. No one would have proven to have been offside. shoulder again. Egypt sent in all the way to the back post. Was headed back. Hill McGrevy did well in truth just to get to that. But backpedaling, unable to find another red shirt in the middle. Kelly able to claim. I was slightly Surprised, in truth, to see Bekale restored to the Gabon goalkeeper role. The other end, nice change of pace there from Abune. Then 
eventually cleared out for a throw. More promising signs for Abune, who looks to be playing up front, I think, maybe in a central striker role. We'll see exactly as the half goes on how Gabon are set up. Not always exactly what we get on the team sheets. I do like to keep us guessing, along with the opposite potions. Yes, Bacardi. A little unfortunate to be sent off in that first match. VAR intervening and spotting that he had handled just outside the area, which was a straight red card, but in his place, Jitterit Ondome conceded just the one goal in the remainder of that game, and then again in the second. Herbic Ali had already conceded two. It was just a penalty as well that Ondome conceded in the second game. His only full appearance kept him away from a clean sheet, but either way, Bacardi reinstated as the number one. He is the first choice keeper, and he'll look to make amends for that nightmarish start to the tournament this evening. But down the other end, see if Gabon can work the Egyptian keeper, Hamza Allah. Not on that occasion other than a goal kick for the 22-year-old Al-Ali keeper. Al-Ali, of course, the CAF Champions League winners this season. Al-Ali watched most of that from the bench. Not the first choice keeper with Al-Ali. Nonetheless, part of a hugely successful team. That's now three out of four trophies in the Champions League in recent years. In fact, they've been winner or runner-up in six of the last seven Champions League campaigns. Quite an incredible run for the Egyptian side. Let's see how far the Egyptian under-23s can go in this tournament. As things stand, this would be enough see them progress to the semi-finals, whatever were to happen. And they get a game between Niger and Mali. First booking of the evening there, handed out. So Babanzilla was claiming his innocence, and he certainly was innocent because was nothing to do with that, it was Nienge and Bongi, and indeed, yes, it was Bongi who has been on the receiving end of that first yellow of the game. Up until perhaps just having a chat with those on the sidelines. Yes, that other game between Niger and Mali. Only really come into effect if Egypt fall behind here, but we will keep you up to date on what is happening in that other final Group B match. Twelve minutes in, and it is still nil-nil there as well. Asia and Egypt with identical records to this point. Goalless draw between them. And then a 1 0 win each on match day two. So the head head even, the goal difference even, goal scored even. It will be down to a drawing of lots if they were to both lose by the same scoreline this evening. And Gabon looking to put them behind in the game. Matuti trying to hang on to the ball, didn't do so in the end. then committing the foul as he tried to nick the ball back from Mohamed Saber.
flicked on by Faisal. But Adel wasn't making the run that he expected. Gallo with plenty to say. Egypt employing the high press again, as they did on match day two, worked a great effect there. Really stopped. Mali playing out from the back with any comfort. Three to Faisal. Trying to cut it back to his left, but Daniel Dutumi is wise to that. Atef does manage to get the ball in. Flicked up into the air by Adele. Eventually finds its way to Bacali. Quarter of an hour in. Two sides still figuring each other out. half chances, I think guilt edged. Foul well, there on Hatem Mohamed, which sees Gabon pick up a second yellow card already. This one going to Edlin Matuti. Often see the referees keep the yellow cards in their pockets in the early stages of games. It's already two produced for Gabon. That one was pretty hard to ignore for Mr. Artan. See the standings with everything goalless in the two games. It will be Niger and Egypt going through as things stand. Mali need to score against Niger. draw for them there and a loss for Egypt wouldn't be enough it would end up level on points but the head-to-head -head with Egypt's 1-0 win would see them through to the semi-finals the battle there between Jave and El Magrabi results in an Egypt free kick like an innocent coming together something of a high press themselves but it's mostly just Mabune doing the running around at the front on his own this task can be at times and Egypt very proficient when it comes to playing it out from the back have given it away in midfield there though quickly hunting in packs to win it back Scrappy spell of play. It's with a Gabon free kick. Rowedi with the foul. Ayono just to keep that one in. That's a ball for Jarve. He's gone down in the box. He appeals. The referee doesn't look interested. Again, I'm sure VAR will have a look. Causing trouble. That's a bad ball in, just too much height, power on it in the end from Matuti. Over the head of Babune. It was Jarve's tenacity that saw him nick the ball away. And the question is did El Magrabi? because I don't think he got a touch on the ball. No sign of referee pausing the game whilst we are deliberate. That certainly would 
spice things up a little. Egypt were to fall behind. Looks like El Magrabi has escaped an iffy moment. I'm sure there will have been a few nerves for the 22-year-old. Side flag there up against Faisal once again. El Magrabi brought into the team to replace Ahmed Eid. He's picked up his second yellow card of the tournament on match day two is serving a suspension. And McGrubby had only played nine minutes of football in the first two match days. Rewarded with a first start here. But getting himself into a bit of trouble there against Rose Jarvey. No harm done though. Yes, yeah, speaking of Jarvey, talk about him causing a nuisance in the opposition box. Caused a bit of nuisance in the build up to the tournament. It was Cameroon that Gabon beat in the final qualifier. Quite a dramatic scenario as well. All playing tailing in the first qualifying round, 5 0 win over Madagascar. But then against Cameroon, came down to penalties, a 1 0 win each in the two legs. Gabon eventually winning a marathon penalty shootout, 7 6. But after the final whistle, it would all happen off the pitch. Late March, Cameroonian Football Federation, known as Fekafoot, lodged an appeal against Gabon, claiming that Jarvey was actually born in 1997, not 2003. That would, of course, make him ineligible to feature in an under-23 competition. He also claimed his name was actually Flores N. Jarvey, with an N at the start. Federation responded, stating that Chave had been born on the 29th of July 2003 in Lamborene. Initially, Gabon looked to have been disqualified from the tournament, but ultimately the appeals board reversed the decision and reinstated them. Unfortunately, they won't be going any further than this evening's match, but at least he did get to participate. They won the inaugural tournament way back in 2011 to match up on this occasion. This is the second under-23 AFCON they've qualified for after that 2011 win. After 12 years of waiting, haven't quite won with the tournament that they'd have hoped for. Now the battle there between Jarmi and El Magrabi. No debate around the challenge this time. El Magrabi putting it out for a throw. Take the corner. Five yellow shirts in a tight huddle around the penalty spot. But nearly found its way to Jarve, right over the head of everyone in the end. Tarek slipping as he attempted to clear. I think with a few of the rest of us 
Awari is expecting a throw. I believe he has now got it. Yeah. Clearly came off Tarek and the referee correcting that decision. Left it into a decent area there by Manel Endutume. But a short handling from Ala for his third clean sheet in three games in this tournament. there winning the free kick it was he who won that penalty 45 seconds into the first game 17 year old youngest player on the pitch one of the youngest in the tournament dream start and since then it's not upon it gone right for he and his side They are without their captain who converted that penalty. Emmanuel Abono Esogo, absent from the match day squad today. Did come off late on match day two. Maybe an injury, not totally sure, but either way, missing. It's left a bit of a shuffle in the attacking setup for Gabon. They've drew some decent moments so far. Comfortable one for Ahmed Nabil Koka. Like boot catching him in the back of his head. Yes, from his own teammate, it was Abdel Magid and Will Hurt. And it's on to check him out, and hopefully, we'll be able to continue. And a snapshot there from Saber. was moving. Quite the whip on the shots that Saber would have hoped for, but I think if that had gone a couple of feet lower, Bakali would have been rooted to the spot. Carrying it on. Blue two mate. One two. Trying to flick it on, and it does eventually find its way to Abune. Still going. Eventually cleared by Al Magrabi. Bongi looking to the referee, but he wasn't interested. And Yono. Looking to shield that out for a throw. Didn't quite manage to do so under the close attentions of Ibrahim Adel. He did win a free kick, though. Has a little too hard for the referee's liking by the number 10. The free kick. Rushing in. Clipping Rawedi rather than the ball. being taken by Bacale there. It's very fortunate that that ball has bounced kindly for him. Closed down quickly by Faisal. Which is taking a little too long. Bacale was yelling at some outfield players. I'm not sure who he could blame that on. He had time and space. Just took a little too much of it. Put himself under pressure. Got away with it as well. That's one each, I think, 
for each team's defensive lines where they've escaped. Could have been an iffy situation. A bit quicker with the kick this time, Bacardi. Still goalless in both games as we head for the half hour mark. So still, as things stand, it is Egypt and Niger who will be heading through. That could very easily have rebounded straight into the back of Bacali's net. Good chasing by Faisal. He's a Zamalek player. Spent the last two seasons so on loan at National Bank of Egypt. Just the three goals and 48 appearances, so he's returning to Zamalek and looking to find the net a little more often with the Egyptian Giants. If given the opportunity, two goals and 20 appearances for them. Up to this point, earlier in his career. Cross in, which nearly found its way to Matuti there. It was missed by everyone in the middle. It's good anticipation by Matuti. And it might drop to him, but not quite execution on the volley. If it took a slight flick, uh, maybe just the slightest of touches of Tarek to put off Matuti. Hard to tell. Still hard to tell. It was awkward either way for the teenager. Very high strike that volley. Strong tackle there from Tarek. It's been fairly even so far. Gabon actually with more of the possession so far and more of the shots. goes Gabon's way. Another clash. Another wrestling match between Ambula and Faisal. So Faisal's gone down very easily there after pulling on the hair of Ambula and claiming to have been elbowed. Abune. More solid defending from Mohammed. Abune trying to find his way into the box and not quite managing it. And rolling. He's just getting back to his feet now as Matuti does make it into the box. It's a good save from Allah. That looked to be heading for the far corner. And that is the biggest chance we've seen so far. Certainly one. Now it's an offside flag following it. Uh, down the other end, Adele. Doing well to pick out Saber. His shot's blocked by his own man. Faisal in the way. Frustration for Saber. This, the Gabon chance, nicely taking it past Abdel Magid and then a strong left footed shot. But Ala not looking to concede his first goal of the tournament. He wants to keep that perfect run going and did so there commendably. 
quick reactions, powerful shot. It was a nice height for the keeper, but nonetheless, doing well to get a strong hand to it. Yeah, the moment before, they saw Abune rolling into the area, but Rowadi certainly getting the ball. So a lively minute or two there in the game. Faisal somehow gets it down the line to Mohamed. Left back looking to get in across. Win a corner. I think that'll be a throw. Atef. And he does stop it going out for a goal kick. Trying to wriggle his way free. <laughs> 20-year-old plays for Al Mokolun Al Arab. And another still playing in Egypt. Most of these players are. A bit more varied in the Gabon 11. Abune plays in Hungary. Giave with Aris Limesol in Cyprus. Aventura in Spain with Terrassa. US Bologna for Oyono, the right back. It's in France. Moldova for Mbula. France as well for Ndutume. Local heroes, though, who have impressed more in this tournament to this point. Those of Egypt, of course. I mean, in this match, though, Gabon may be showing slightly more. Jose charging there, but just at the last second, in with the block. Saw him flying on forwards, but the ball remaining still. Natif bundled over fairly, in the opinion of the referee, and no appeals from the winger. Referee has paused proceedings, I think, to allow Nze to be checked over. He can do some damage. Those moments when you try and unleash a shot and find a solid obstacle in the way, this time in the shape of El Magrabi. It was quite a shock to go through the leg. On this occasion, though, say holding a shoulder, maybe fell awkwardly on it. Yeah, certainly seems to be the shoulder that's receiving the attention of the Gabon medic. Good crowd in this evening, considering it's a few thousand kilometers for both sets of fans to get to. Tangier here in Morocco. Jerry McCarley even further from home. Brazilian. Very experienced coach. Started his career as a player, that is, as a goalkeeper. But retired at the age of just 23. He started coaching at 30 with his first club, Portuguesa. Taking charge of the club's youth setup. Subsequently spent the vast majority of his career in charge of youth sides, notably Figueirense and Atletico Mineiro. Finally took a full head coach role on New Year's Eve 2010 at Romeo Prudente, but that reign lasted just 21 days into that new year. Subsequently returning to Atletico and its youth team. He's had the most success with youth teams of Brazil. The under-20s in 2015 achieved its second place at the World Cup. And then with the under-23s, took the gold at the 2016 Olympics, winning it for the first time in the country's history. They retained it as well in 2020. And speaking of the Olympics, that is, of course, the other prize 
on hand in this tournament beyond continental glory and lifting the under 23 afghan trophy the top three will claim a spot in next year's olympics set to take place in paris so of course the two finalists and the winner of the third place playoff guaranteed a spot there fourth place might get it as well that goes into a playoff with the country from afc Great work from Abune there, trying to wriggle free. Nigeria and Cameroon, the only African countries to have taken gold at the Olympics. In football, of course, this is. 96 and 2000, respectively. Bono featured just the once, finishing 12th in 2012 in London, going out to the group stages with Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, scoring their only goal of the tournament against Switzerland. Of course, three overage players allowed to join the under-23 team for the Olympic campaign. It's only been the case since 1992, the under-23 rule. That age limit was brought in. Egypt have featured at three games. Knocked out in the group stages at Barcelona 92. Quarter finals in London and the most recent games, Tokyo 2020. By Japan and Brazil, respectively, those two quarter finals. We're back to this qualification for the Olympics. Now that we're back underway, we had a card handed out to Uri Michel and Bula causing tensions to simmer a little between the two sets of players and the officials. It's going to be another yellow handed out here as well for the overly strong debate. And a red card, in fact, a second yellow. Was that for Mbongi? I think, yeah. He's asking VAR to have a look and consider a shirt pull potentially, potentially, I should say. That's a huge amount in it there. He then blocks it off. There's the shirt pull that he'll have been talking about, and then he's caught Mahmoud Saber. Here's the shirt pull. Is that enough? Let's see this overturned. I mean, it is a second yellow card rather than a straight red. Sure, VAR will actually be able to do anything about it anyway, despite Bongi's clear displeasure at the decision. So, for the second time this tournament, it looks like Gabon are going to be reduced to 10. It was Francois Becale, the keeper, on the stroke of half time on match day one. Looks like it's going to be Roy, Munienge, and Bongi. Second yellow card. Bacale picked up a yellow himself for his strong debates. He's trying to say, I'm the captain. I'm allowed to talk to you about this. But Omar Artan, the referee, not impressed either way. Bongi slowly making his way to the sidelines now, being encouraged over by Poste Aware. A yellow card from Buda as well. There was Matuti. They're coming together slightly earlier on. Plenty going on for the referee to deal with in that couple of minutes. Now Gabon with a numerical disadvantage again. The man who won the penalty 45 seconds into his first appearance at this tournament, 17-year-old 
Unyenge and Bongi. It goes from a dream start to a nightmare finish. It's all been downhill since that first involvement in the first minute. Gavon already eliminated and he'll now be heading home a little early. Certainly at least down the tunnel a little early. Now, can Egypt make the most of their extra man? Grab themselves a goal and make their qualification far more secure and their evening a little less stressful. Once again, a bit of juggling to do for Ibele Ignambi. To reorganize after Bekale's red card in the first game. Very wayward effort from Abdel Magid. Ignambi used all five of his substitutions before the second half had even got underway in that game. He had made one early on before the red. Obviously, had to introduce a keeper for the final seconds in the first half and then making a triple substitution during the half-time break. And they have three minutes to mull over. Seems there's opposite number, Mikali scratching his beard there. I'm sure Mikmambi with arguably the more thinking to do. And now he'll change his setup now. A man light for the second half. Nice work by Matuti again. It's been a decent game so far. Let's see Hanzei going down there. Maybe here a chance for Egypt. Zatev trying to find a way into the middle to his captain. He's bundled over. Adele. Whistles from the crowd, but in truth, not too many complaints from the players. Still with Egypt, though. Tarek looking to curl one in. Acrobatic effort from Adele. Not quite making the connection, though. And now Gabon can look to break. And Zay is still down. Abune knocks it beyond El Magrabi, who himself gets a yellow card now. So many bookings in this first half. Most of them have gone to Gabon players, but now Ahmed El Magrabi into the referee's book as well. Not sure the issue there for Anze. Let's see here. I think it must might be self-inflicted. El Magrabi there. I think a genuine attempt at the ball, but certainly blocking off Abune as he looked to dart away down that right wing. Scrappy end to this first half. And Zay being treated now by the medics. Oh, he's a bit more worrying. And the player seems to have gone down under their own steam. A stretch run to carry. And Zay off to the sidelines. 21 on Wednesday, Samake and Zay. This not the belated celebration he might have been hoping for. And we spoke about Nambi's quick changes in the first game after losing a player, and it will be a double change. Floris Jabe is the man sacrificed for the reshape. See Jean-Claude Ngunga there, ready to come on. Uh, frustration for Jarve. He doesn't want his tournament to end like this. But it will be for the 19-year-old. Such stress before it even got here with all that drama with Cameroon. 
and it hasn't been much less stressful once they've got underway. He started his career with Winguidi Sports in his native Gabon before moving to Mali to sign with Joliba in 2021 and then joining former coach Ibella in the process. And it's his coach tonight and has made the decision to take him off. Moved to Cyprus in February 22, joining Aris Limassol and then after scoring on his debut and in the first Limassol derby, moved to EMP on a six-month loan in January. He'll be back to Aris Limassol come August, but that's the end of his continental adventure. And that's the end of the first half between Gabon and Egypt. I'm sure the referee will have a few people coming up to him as they make their way to the tunnel. Tumultuous end to the first half for Gabon. Quite controversial. Shake of the head from Rogerio Mikali. His side will have an extra man though for the second half. They'll be looking to make the most of it. Francois Bicali still speaking with the officials. I'm sure disappointed to have received that yellow card. As captain, he is one that is permitted to speak to the referees as since that rule was brought in to try and prevent the crowding the referees used to have to deal with. But anyway, lots to unpack. Not a huge amount of action, or at least not too many chances. Clear cut, best one went the way of Gabon. Quartz EV Fluid, our latest innovation to ensure optimal temperature for your battery. Quartz by Total Energies, 70 years of innovation in lubricants for all types of engines. At one point, Gabon did have more possession. It's Egypt who ended up with slightly more by the halfway point. And they also ended up with a few more attempts, both with just a one on target. Gabon's certainly the most threatening shot well saved by Hamza Ala. Game in the balance, but now skewed potentially the way of Egypt with that numerical advantage for the second 45. Will they be able to make the most of it? Will they need to? It's a question. A draw enough to see them to the semi finals, but a goal would make that job far easier as they head towards the final whistle. Certainly less stressful anyway. Join us for the second half and find out. Yeah, yeah. 
Quartz EV Fluid, our latest innovation to ensure optimal temperature for your battery. Quartz by Total Energies, 70 years of innovation in lubricants for all types of engines. Hello and welcome back to Tangier for the second half of this final Group B match between Gabon and the holders Egypt at the 2023 Total Energy CAF Under-23 Africa Cup of Nations. Goalless at the break, been fairly balanced overall, but for this second half, Gabon will have a numerical disadvantage, not for the first time in this tournament, and you just saw there the goalkeeper, Francois Junior Bacali, was sent off on the stroke of half time on match day one. And this time on the stroke of half time, it was the midfielders, Roy Minienge and Bongi, the 17 year old, who saw red for a second yellow. And once again, Gabon will have to play the second half. A man down. Double change made by Ibele Ignambi. Floris Jave sacrificed. And on came Jean-Claude Gunga and Bebin Josphet Luembe. Looks like we might have some more substitutions as well. Here yeah, coming over the Tanoi. Luembe almost as young as Mbongi, who was the youngest player on the pitch. Luembe is 18 years of age. But referee blows the whistle and away we go for the second half. A tough game now for Gabon, which was already going to be a case of playing for pride. Immediately more for the referee to deal with and another yellow card handed out that is the sixth that has been shown to a Gabon player already with just half of the game gone and Gunga only just brought onto the pitch effectively a couple of minutes at the end of the first half and immediately into the second getting a yellow Two of those six, of course, shown to Mbongi, who has since headed down the tunnel for an early bath. So the question now, will Egypt be able to make the most of that new medical advantage? They don't need to win to progress to the semi-finals. Now we can see there was another substitution. This one for Egypt. Ali Zaza brought on for Mohamed El Magrabi, who had himself picked up a yellow, the only player from Egypt to do so. There's another player down, holding their face. There's Hatem Mohamed this time, after a clash with Kosti Awari. Certainly a shirt pull, and then maybe just a slight collision with the leg. Referee not done yet. Having a word with Hatta Mohammed. Mohammed, I think, asking for VAR. They'll get involved if necessary. Anyway, let's try and get on with some football, shall we, lads? And we got a bit messy towards the end of the first half. That's better. And Abune 
with another shot. That one a little easier for Hamza Allah to collect up. Brunei tested him more thoroughly earlier in the first half for that red card. It's a reminder of the standings. In Group B, Niger and Egypt with identical records coming into this game. And joint top and effectively the two qualification spots. Mali just one point back. And Mali are playing Niger in the other game. Just happening simultaneously. We will keep you updated on any information there. And there has been some information just come in. Mali take the lead. Mamadi Songare with the penalty. His second of the tournament also dispatched a penalty on match day one in that 3 1 win over Gabon. And that does change things. Mali now to the top of the group. I'm sure we'll see a graphic soon enough. And that means that as things stand, as the header from Osama Faisal goes wide, if Gabon were to get a goal here, Egypt and Niger would be back on level terms and it would be a case of drawing lots to see who would progress to the semi-finals. That would also be the case, of course, if both were to win by the same scoreline or draw the same scoreline. But it would be a case of drawing lots to see who would go through as top and who is second. And you can see Mali now in top spot and it will be the runner up in this group that plays the hosts, Morocco, who are the winners of Group A and have had a very impressive tournament so far. Three wins from three. So Egypt could do to get themselves back on top maybe and looking to strike there. Adele breaking away, but his speed matched by that. Impressively so by right, Jeremy Oyono, the right back. He is a very pacey fullback and there coming to the rescue for his side. Nice through ball by Saber. But Oyono doing enough. Corner in, not really cleared. Attempted overhead kick by Aware. In the end, though, it will be a goal kick as Mohamed boots it up into the touch. Partially cleared. A couple of miss hits. And he got away with it in the end. Into his own face, in fact. Shouldn't laugh. He did get the job done, one way or another. Follow along with the hashtag Total Energies AFCON U23. Let us know where you're watching from, who you're cheering on, what you're hoping to see in this second half. Bellary Nambi is hoping to see improved performance from his side. Matuti here. Had a good first half. Wins a corner for Gabon. They've not played badly. They've held their own. They've had a couple of good chances in the first half, but it all went a bit awry late on. It's a decent delivery in. Headed away by Tarek. Lifted back in by Oyono. Faisal battling with Ngunga. And here's Egypt, who bring it away. They look to strike on the counter again. It can be dangerous on the break. Not on this occasion, though, misplaced pass. Gabon can start again from the back. Oh. Another risky moment from Bricale, who's closed down 
by Simon Beisel in the first half. Hammered it into the forward and he was fortunate to see it bounce up and he was able to collect it. That pass a little too close to comfort, I'm sure. For a few watching on in yellow. See it again here. Oh, just across the path of Adele. Here is Adele. Now with the ball at his feet. Going past Iono. Not able to find the teammate in the middle. A couple of nervy moments for Gabon early on. Egypt looking to take advantage of their advantage. Extra player. And now with Mali having moved above them into top spot, maybe the win is more desirable. As it was, they were joint top and would have been seeing lots drawn to the side top spot. Now they're guaranteed to be in second as things stand. If they were to lose 1-0, well, then it would be lots drawn, but not for top spot. It's for qualification at all, so they can't afford to throw too many men forward. It's a balancing act now for Rogerio Mikali and his players. Rawedi has also been subbed off. You can see there for Mustafa Saad. He doesn't play in, let's say, a reassuring manner all the time for his defenders. There on the edge of his area. That's what he receives a red card for in the first game, handling just outside the area on that occasion, heading it clear. been onside there. Nicely timed run by Faisal. The ball just bouncing away from him. Not quite quick enough to get there. Catch it on the bounce. Right, ten minutes elapsed in this second half and it's not been short of action. Now Egypt's looking to strike again. Faisal looking to find Adele again. Adele again, out comes Picale, punches it clear. Gabon win the free kick. And Gunga brought down just outside his area. Now eventually, maybe an opportunity to clear their lines. Speak to each other, I think might be the instruction there from Rogerio Mikali. Fouled. And Gunga trying to take it quickly, but referee wants to have a word first, I think. Space here for Egypt to run into, particularly for that man Ali Zaza. Utilizes that space, he's still going, can't quite find a way through to Faisal.
Mohamed. Adel. Not afraid to take on players, but two on one on that occasion. A bit too much of an ask. Abune, another man not afraid to take on the opposition. And it's back to him here. Lovely ball forwards. And still on goes on Abune. Just a goal kick, I think. Enough of the ball for the referee. Strong tackle from Abdel Magid to see the reverse angle, really, to get the best view. He certainly got a toe to the ball there. Both players touching the ball at the same time, really. Abune. Appealing. Makali remonstrating. Not sure what he was unhappy with there. It's a good tackle by his defender. Maybe the fact that Bruni was allowed to get into that position at all. He's still being playing at, played at quite a pace this match. the other substitute for Egypt fresh legs could be using against Gabon as time goes on and their legs grow wearier having to make up for their missing player with extra running Hassan Mohamed quickly won back. Adele plays it forward to Faisal, who didn't realise Bula was there. Once again, though, it's soon enough. Back with Egypt. Space here for Adele. Tries to flick it on. enough for Vicali. Nothing unorthodox on this occasion for the keeper. Proving himself to be something of a wild card at times. Cutting inside, choosing to lay it off. Atef. Zaza seemingly just about keeping that in. Possibly so, preventing a goal kick. Looks to have gotten away from him. Trying to pick out Adele in the middle. Thumbs up. Appreciation of the attempt from the captain. For no worry. Fans, young and old, watching on the youngsters of African football. We're not quite as young as the under 17s and under 20s, but still plenty of promise on show in this under 23 AFCON tournament. Adele comes over to take it short. Gets it back outside of the boot. Where's that going? Beyond the far post. Fortunately for Bacali. Unfortunately, also beyond all his teammates in the middle. Nice idea. Just a little too much on the pass. Yono 
just about getting away with that twice. Nearly losing the ball to Adele. Egypt have been a little more dominant since the half-time break. Gabon still not afraid to get forwards. You can see there, Gunga running forwards. Not too easy to see exactly what set up either side in truth as at the moment. Another change here. Atta Mohamed comes off for Bakri Mohamed. The goal kick for Gabon. So Iknambi still waiting to make any further changes. Now almost 20 minutes into this half. And he's happy enough with what he's seen from his tactical improvisation after losing Mbongi to that second yellow. That's a nice work from his attacker as well, Obune. Keeping it in. Tutti waiting patiently on the sideline, or rather on the edge of the area. Never quite found him, and that's an iffy back pass. Just about enough on it to reach Bikali. Tutti this time, I think, offside, yeah. Frustrated, he thought it was against him, but both players were offside when the ball was kicked. Great decision from the linesman. Touch of cramp for Francois Bacali. Those on the bench can now only watch on and hope that things go their way. We'll see here if Bacali is able to continue. If not, I'm sure Desiree and Domi would jump at the chance to get another appearance. His third of the tournament. He replaced Bikali after the red card and of course played whilst he was suspended on match day two. Talking about the setups and how it's difficult to know exactly what formations either side are playing in. McCarley's brought off two defenders. Only brought one on. And of course, Gabon. Ten men on the pitch. A bit of a reshuffle. Remains in the balance for now, and we're still goalless. The other game remains at 1 0 to Mali. They're hanging on to a crucial lead that will see them progress at the expense of Niger. Egypt would join them as runners up. If they fail to score here, a winner would see them top the group. As mentioned, the runners-up will be facing Morocco, the hosts. Only team with a 100% record in the group stages. And Guinea, 
runners up in Group A await the winner of this group. Guinea scraping through with an equaliser against Ghana. That saw them progress on goal difference. So, of course, you never know how it's going to go in tournament football. But Morocco is certainly looking like the team you'd want to avoid in the semi-finals, if possible. Home advantage, and they've very much made that advantage count up to this point in the tournament. Very impressive 5-1 win over Ghana on match day two. So, three-quarter mark of the game. Atef still looking to deliver in that killer ball to give his side the lead. And now it's a throw forward to Faisal. Back to Atef. Left-footed cross towards Saber. It's knocked on. And the chip was attempted by Adele. But Pekale up. And with no signs of the cramp that was afflicting him a couple of minutes ago, staying on his feet, it's a good thing he did so. He defied Adele. Another goal for Egypt. He has scored Egypt's only goal of the tournament so far. Ibrahim Adel, the winner last time out. He's one of the more experienced members of the team, 22 years old, four caps for the senior team as well. Also played for the under-20s in the past. 21 goals in 76 appearances for Pyramids. Number seven, Mahmoud Saber, also a Pyramids player. Mentioned Faisal's run with Zamalek. He's also joined by a couple of teammates, Mohamed Tarek and Hassem Abdel Majid in defence, both of Zamalek. And here is Tarek. Koka has had quite a game than he did last time out. It's more influential on match day two. Nicely worked by Adele. Here's El Bakri. It's a nice ball in. Gabon escape again, though. Abune again doing that thankless task. Trying to bring it out single handedly. He wins a free kick in the process. Rather kicking Saad himself, but Saad equally didn't get the ball. Lovely, no. Weighted ball for Adele. And a very threatening one as well from Ashraf El Bakri. But punched away by Bakali. Certainly not afraid to get involved, Francois Bakali. Not. A shrinking violet by any means. Somewhat tame cross in by Jeremy Ayono. That's given away to Faisal. An Egypt break. Have plays over here. So to Saad on the right. Zaza. Nicely flicked on by Saber, but not quite finding its way through to Adele. Brilliant work again by Obune, rushing back to keep that ball in, nicking it off the toes of an Egypt player. Nice ball forwards for Matuti. They have been the two standout players for Gabon. But this occasion, Matuti running out of steam a little. He tried to chop. Zaza there, caught, but he'd already got the pass away either playing advantage or not spotting that. The advantage didn't last very long, if so. Carly still watching on. As time ticks away, Egypt still haven't conceded a goal in this tournament. Scored the one. They haven't lost in any of their last seven games, the Egypt under 23s. 
but they have scored two or few, or fewer, I should say, in each of their last four under-23 AFCON games. So perhaps following the script here, low scoring and Egypt not conceding. See Fennel Gutume going down there, all on his own. Maybe another change for Egypt. A double change, in fact, Atif coming off for Mohamed Samir. I thought I saw El Bakri heading to the sidelines, but he was only subbed on, so perhaps just a single change. Which would leave Mikali with one remaining for the final quarter of an hour still in his pocket. As you can see, Mali remained top of the group, courtesy of that 1-0 lead. Game with Niger. Niger need an equaliser. They will be heading home. And a brilliant ball through from Adel, but still Egypt can't find the opener. It was a desperate look there from Faisal over to the linesman, maybe to spare him. Having missed that opportunity, but the flag stayed down. It is an Egypt corner though. Quickly put in by Adele, but cleared away again. Faisal can't believe he hasn't broken the deadlock there. Adele hanging on to the ball. A little frustrated there, I think, not to get the free kick. Adele. It will be a Gabon throw. Yeah, that chance again. Little space for the captain is all he needs. Perfect. Perfectly picking out the pass. Faisal, rather than taking on his left, let it come across him. And then, it must have been a save. We haven't really seen the right angle for that. It was a corner. There's certainly no one else getting involved. I thought at first it had clipped the outside of the post. But Faisal will be disappointed. He said he struggled for goals in his time with National Bank Egypt in the Egyptian Premier League recently. Only two for Zamalek as well as parent club. And they're not able to convert. Perhaps the biggest chance of the game so far. 15 minutes late left, rather, for either side to break the deadlock here. As group B comes to an end. Egypt have shown moments of class, but I think Mikali will be a little disappointed that they haven't made the most, particularly in this second half with that extra player, and secure their spot in the final four. Because one Gabon goal here, and it would be back to the lots drawing of lots between themselves and Niger for qualification. Tenacity again by Adele. Brings the ball into the box. He's run the ball out of play in the end. I think it took a nick off a Gabon defender, so it will be a corner. It's Frosty Aware. It's marshalling him out. The change here. Finally, the third change for Gabon, and it is Benel and Lutume. Here we saw suffering with an injury a little earlier. Makes his way to the sidelines. 19 year old in his final days as a teenager, turns 20 next week. He's replaced by Marcus Mombo. And also heading off is Edlin Matuti. As mentioned, had a good game. Well, that game comes to an end now. He's replaced by 
Burrick, NMA Ella. It's also a sub on match day one late on. Had quite an impact there. Still no impact on the back of the net for Egypt. Free header in the box. Again, brilliant work by Adele. Perfect delivery in. And totally unmarked, Hossam abdel Magid somehow conspires to head it wide. He had Faisal waiting behind him as well. Now queuing up there to put that away. The first involvement for Enemiella, 22-year-old is in the shirt number 22. Plays for Andre in Liga. Will be League 2 for Andre next year. Relegated bottom of the French top tier. Difficult season. A clash there between Tarek and a Gabon player, but. Hard feelings. It's a Gabon throw. Oh, yeah, it's quite dangerous actually. Yeah, it was maybe Babanzilla. He got a quick look at the replay. Fortunate to escape without a free kick, certainly, if not a yellow card there. Either way, Gabon back on the attack for the first time, but another clash between the two 21s. Uh, you know, fouling Ashraf El Bakri. Egyptian to the ball first. Despite the pace of Oyono. Taken quickly by Egypt, but Adele. One of his teammates getting in his own way and then taking it again quickly and giving it away on a little messy. And that's kind of demonstrative of how Egypt have just lacked that cutting edge in this game. And to some extent, this tournament, as mentioned, incredibly efficient in defense. Still, he had to concede. Hamza Allah and his defense heading for a third consecutive clean sheet. But. Further up the field, just that final ball has often been lacking in this tournament. That one counter-attack, brilliantly finished by Adele in the previous match, is their only goal of the tournament. And that will be something Mikali perhaps has to address. That's if Egypt are to progress to the semi-finals. They're on course to do so as things stand, but one Gabon goal could change all that. Will this be that Gabon goal? Mombo is one of his first involvements, looking to pick out the other substitute in Enemiella. Luembe hammering one from distance. Now Egypt looking to profit on the space. Faisal using his strength against Foste Aware. Winning a corner. Egypt would love a goal here just to settle those nerves. They are through as runners up as things stand. But they'd rather be through as winners, I'm sure, and not have to worry for the remaining 10 minutes about any potential Gabon winner that would send them into the luck of the draw. Another corner. That one headed away by Ayono. This one to the edge of the area and the shot. Is the deadlock broken finally? And it's Mahmoud Saber who surely secures Egypt's spot in the final four of the AFCON Under-23 tournament.
can hear the noise inside the Ibn Patuta Stadium. Plenty of Egyptian fans here. And that's finally the moment they've been waiting for. The crosses hadn't been working. That one to the edge of the area. Looked like it might be closed down. And Gunga rushing out. But Saber got there first and drilled it home into the bottom corner. Bekale, a little unsighted, couldn't get down quickly enough. Brilliant finish by Saber. And Egypt return to the top of Group B. A wry smile from Gabon's number seven, Jeremy Albune. He's come close, but not found the nets. But it was Egypt's number seven who did so. Relief etched all over the face of Rogerio Mikali. And now they look to finish the job. Double the lead. Round of apology from Saber for a slightly wayward pass, but I think he can be let off by his teammates and his national team's fans having restored them to the top of the group standings as things are currently playing out. Mali remain ahead of Niger. With that goal moves Egypt on to seven points and above Mali. Gabon looks set to go home empty-handed and pointless. A world away from that perfect start. The opening goal, three minutes into the campaign. A penalty within 45 seconds, which was converted. But since then, they have failed to find the net. There's the confirmation. Niger desperately need an equaliser. Here, though, Egypt looking to run away with things. Penalty appeal. Saad rushes over to the referee. It's a lovely one-two with Faisal. I think VAR might be having a look at that. It's Foste Aware. He's stuck in a toe. He's not got the ball and he seems to have caught Saad. And I wouldn't be surprised to see the referee head over to his pitch side monitor. Nicale clearly wants the penalty. Nambe. We go VAR checking Nambe's day, which is already a pretty tough. Could be about to get tougher. He took full responsibility for his team's poor performance in this tournament. It's unfortunate, Gabon. Haven't met their targets, which was to qualify for the Olympics above all. The coach said the team's determined to achieve a positive outcome in this final match and make a statement. He said, well, we have nothing to lose in this final match. We'll approach it with utmost seriousness. Players will give their all to secure the victory before we return home. That's not going to be the case. They held out for a long time, commendably so, with 10 players in the second half. But with the dam broken, it looks like the flood may enter now. I can only see this decision going one way. And then it will be a penalty, you'd imagine, and a good chance of a 2 0 lead. And a good night for Egypt, made better still. Ignambe attributed their lackluster performance to the limited preparation time. He praised his players for their efforts. 
said the tournament serves as a valuable learning experience and opportunity for the younger players to improve their skills. This will have been a tough lesson for these young Gabonese players. They were already certain to be heading home. But they looked set with five or ten minutes remaining to be able to go home with their heads held a little higher with a tough fought hard fought draw against Egypt still the referee Omar Artan awaits instruction from VAR and there we go as expected he heads over to the pitch side monitor and I can only see one decision that he will reach. More often than not, when a referee goes over to the pitch side monitor, the decision will be reversed. It has to be a pretty clear and obvious error, as is the famous phrase now utilised in VAR. See the collision there between the knee of Saad and the calf of Foster Aware. And just to further cement the current standings in this group, Mali have a second against Niger. Check the Dumbia. It's the two players who turned round the game against Gabon. Once again, Songari with the penalty and Dumbia with the second, as was the case on match day one. That was where it all started to go wrong for Gabon. And it looks like it's about to go wrong once again here depending on the decision made by Omar Artan. He wants a few more angles. He wants to be 100% certain in his decision. To me, it's clear that Saad has got to the ball first and that Aware has only caught the player and not touched the ball. He has seen enough now. He makes his way back to the pitch. And points to the spot. A nod from the man who won the penalty. It'll be the captain with the responsibility of converting it. Still the Gabon players debate with the referee but the decision will stand and in truth the difference between a 1-0 loss and a 2-0 loss when they're already eliminated maybe isn't worth the risk of any further yellow cards being handed out Adele kindly hands the ball over to his strike partner Osama Faisal maybe he feels Faisal could use a goal. Adele's already got on the score sheet in this tournament. He got the winner on match day two. His number nine has come close a few times. Can he finally make good? And send Egypt surely into the semi-finals. He can. He finds the bottom corner. Egypt a 2-0 to the good and surely secured as Group B's winners. All celebrations on the sidelines for Egypt and in the stands. Both games were slow burners this evening. Had to wait until the second half. 
between Mali and Niger. Penalty broke the deadlock there. A penalty has surely set this result in concrete. Bekali went the right way, but it was a good penalty. Passed with a fair amount of power into the bottom corner. Celebration from Mikali. As mentioned, he's been there and done it before. And so have Egypt. They are the reigning champions. They're also the only country to qualify for all four under 23 AFCONs. They earned the bronze medal in 2011. A team featuring a certain young Mohamed Salah knocked out in the semis by the hosts Morocco before beating Senegal in the third place playoff to secure their spot at the Olympics. Salah's only goal of the tournament came in the semi-final defeat to Morocco. Did feature in the team of the tournament when he made it onto the imaginary subs bench. But with this win, they've avoided a semi-final with Morocco. It would appear with only a minute or so remaining of the five additional had to wait a long time, but I don't think the referee would add on two minutes. In 2015, Egypt fell at the group stages without picking up a win. But on home soil in 2019, they won all five of their games, beating Cote d'Ivoire 2-1 after extra time in the final. Ramadan Sobi, the hero, with the crucial 114th minute winner there. It didn't take quite that long in this game. They eventually broke the deadlock and are now set for a semi-final with Guinea. And it will be Mali who will face Morocco in the semi-final. And on go the young pharaohs, Adele. Toying with Ayono. Faisal. Looking a little more confident now with that goal under his belt. And winning a free kick. And oh, that's a lash out, I think. Be careful there. And Gunga already on a yellow card. Already one hack, a second hack. And it's cut away there, I think. Saw a little lash out as he moved away. Yeah, look at that. That's not great. Appeals for VAR. I'm not sure that would be the best idea. VAR, look, watch that back too closely. And he could be down to nine men. Bamantilla makes way for another Ella. Andre Yordiella. Five minutes is up, and the final substitution as well for Egypt. Ahmed Atia comes on for Ahmed Koka, number 12. He turns 22 next week. And he will be celebrating a little early his birthday with a semi-final appearance. Egypt look for number three. They don't quite find it. It's a great block by Ayono. Ensuring it didn't get to his keeper. Adele with a lovely ball. Such great vision, the captain. Pass from his teammate didn't match. Gabon. Look for a consolation up the other end. But it's a goal kick, and that will surely be that. Head in hands, Fassad, the man who won the penalty, looking to get his name on the score sheet himself. But Oyono in the way. But it didn't matter in the end. Egypt, winners on the night, 2-0. And that enough to see them top the group and book their place in the final four. They had to wait 82 minutes 
before eventually Mahmoud Saber, Abdel Mouzen Hassan scored the goal to send them top of the group and end that nervy wait. And the penalty made even more sure. Nigeria Mikali ushered onto the pitch. You'll know the job's not done yet. The job is done for Gabon. They'll be heading home. And it wasn't the job or the result that they'd have hoped for. They'll look to come back in four years' time. It'll only be four days. Rather than four years that Egypt have to wait for their next under-23 AFCON match. In fact, less than four days, three days. 4th of July, the semi-finals. They will face Guinea in the first semi. Six o'clock, UTC. With Morocco taking on Mali a few hours later. Only four remain. At least three of those will be heading to the Olympics next year. Potentially all four. There was lots of talk of whether lots would be needed. With Egypt and Niger locked on identical records. But in the end, Egypt won 2-0, whilst Niger lost 2-0. And it is the young pharaohs who go through as the group winners. 60% of the possession, 12 attempts, five of which are on target. The red card for Gabon really hurt them in the second half. They held on commendably for quite a long time. Egypt struggled to make their dominance count, but in the end they did. Two goals to the good by the final whistle as were Mali, and you can see there Egypt and Mali. Seven points and six respectively.